a grandparent, do you ever wish you could see more of your grandchildren, or maybe less of them? Do you ever whine about the way your children are raising your grandchildren? If you do, then this is the place for you. I'm January Jones, a grandmother to six perfect grandchildren. The other day, one of my dear friends asked me, if you had to do it all over again, would you have children? I didn't even have to think before responding, no, 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 and no. I repeated it four times because we have four children, and I didn't want to leave anyone out. <laughs> I've been there and done that. My friend, who has wisely chosen to raise animals instead of kids, loved my answer so much that she had to ask me why. Jokingly, I told her that if I had to do it all over again, I'd skip the children and go straight to the grandchildren. It's a fun answer and not too far from the truth. Plus, if you don't like what your grandkids say or do when they're with you, you can give them back to their parents. It's quite simple. Everyone knows that having grandchildren is your reward for not killing your own children. The best part about having grandchildren is all the wonderful things they say that are so pure, so unfiltered, and so true. For example, my four-year-old grandson and I were talking one day about our favorite things. I told him that he was one of my favorite things. He thought about it for a while and then said out of the blow, Did you know my favorite things are Power Rangers and Big Boobies? <laughs> I hadn't known that, but now that I do know it, I know for a fact that he's his grandfather's grandson. My kids have always said the funniest things, but without a doubt, my grandchildren are even funnier. Obviously, they've inherited their grandparents' sense of humor. The fact that grandchildren and their grandparents share a common enemy helps to keep them close. It also helps that we're all good at keeping secrets. When we have to deal with parents, it's best to stick with the don't ask, don't tell policy. In other words, what happens at grandma's stays at grandma's. When it comes to whining grandparents, the equation is simple and constant. Grandchildren can't do anything wrong, whereas their parents can't do anything right. Now that we've broken the code, it's easier to get through family dinners, holidays, and vacations. As the wonderful and wise Sam Levinson said, the simplest toy, one which even the youngest child can operate, is called a grandparent. Sometimes grandparents whine about time and distance. An hour with your grandchildren can make you feel young again. Sometimes anything longer than that and you start to age quickly. <laughs> one of the commonest complaints is that our grandchildren live so far away, we never get to see them. As a grandparent, time is always running out, and the time spent with your grandchildren become the best times of your life. Unfortunately, so many grandchildren live so far away, we don't see enough of them. The distance gets greater the older we get. They start to grow up and don't have time for anyone except their friends. Generally, they dislike their parents, but they seem to love their grandparents, so we don't have all that much to whine about. In my opinion, the family cruise is the almost perfect solution for our family. We could be going on a cruise to Antarctica, and if we were paying for it, everyone would want to go. I don't know if it's running wild all over the ship with cousins or the unlimited soft ice cream, but grandkids love cruising. It's perfect because everyone does their own thing in their own time. We only eat together once a day at dinner. And believe me, once a day is more than enough for a family of 14 to sit down anywhere together, let alone in a dining room on a ship. Sometimes grandparents whine about their grandkids' manners or lack of them. Most grandparents' whines start out like this. It's their parents' fault that our grandchildren act like that. So the reality is that grandparents don't whine about their grandchildren's lack of manners but what a horrible job their parents are doing raising them. It's never the kid's fault, always the parents. Remember that. I'm aware that this may sound like I'm saying the grandchild is always right and the parent is always wrong. Well, it sounds like that because that's exactly what I'm saying. Here's another simple solution for you. Grandchildren love going to the please and thank you boot camp cure with their grandparents. It's amazing how quickly their manners shape up when you're on your way to Chuck E. Cheese or Six Flags. And if that doesn't work, the chocolate brownie bribe will work wonders with the most willful child. 
Now here's my best remedy for grandparents. It's called the three-hour cure. All grandparents whine about the same things. Their grandchildren are either too far away or too close. They either don't see enough of them or too much of them. These are the basic whines of grandparents, ranking right up there with Social Security, health care, their dependents on depends. I've devised the three-hour cure for Nana and Papa's. It involves always living about three hours driving time away from your grandchildren. Three hours is too long to just drop by, yet long enough to force a telephone call before initiating a visit. And it is too long a trip not to find anyone home when you get there. Under the effects of this cure, no party gets to take advantage of any other party. And remember, you're always close enough in case to send anyone back. You know, the return to sender policy. This three-hour distance puts a halt to the proverbial surprise morning visits that grandparents often receive with little people being dropped off in their pajamas. Give it a try, but if you can't move three hours away, always try to remember. Stop whining, stop smiling, and if that doesn't work, then start eating chocolate with your grandkids. Lots and lots of chocolate.